Vince Ferrante uh, talking about Western Flyer. Yes, uh, back in the early 40s when John Steinbeck and Doc Ricketts were looking for a vessel to make the voyage to Sea of Cortez, they went around to the local fishermen with large purseiners and they were interviewing them and seeing what they could do at getting a price, a bid, to go on this voyage. And so they approached my dad and his brothers. And his name was? Your father's name was? Uh, my father's name was Tony Ferrani, and his brothers was uh, Ratsy and uh, Joe Ferrani. Okay. And they were uh, owners of the uh, boat named the uh, New Admiral. And it was a, 72, a 75-foot vessel, Bursainer. And uh, so John was going around asking them for uh, different bids and stuff. So my dad and my uncle, uh, my uncle Joe Grassy wasn't uh, here at the time. I uh, met John Steinbeck at a creamery in downtown Salinas in Old Town on Main Street. And uh, ice I remember, creamery. I remember like uh, ice cream. Uh, uh, well, it was a creamery, uh, but they served uh, food and things like oh, that. Yeah, you know, food too. And uh, had Cheese? a fountain, yeah, and all that. Oh. So. Uh, so anyway, so that was the meeting place. So my dad and my uncle Joe, they drove over from Monterey to meet with John Steinbeck. Uh, and uh, I remember my dad telling me uh, when they went into the restaurant, John Steinbeck took a bottle of beer with him. Yes. And uh, so no as they were uh, <laughs> uh, ordering milkshakes, Steinbeck told uh, my, the waitress, uh, pour this bottle of beer in there and mix it in with the, with the uh, milkshake. Yeah, Which he funny. did, and I thought my dad was kidding until I read a, in a history book of some sort about this, that same thing that he loved milkshakes with beer in them. I don't particularly care for something like that. But uh, anyway, the story goes that they eventually chose the Western Flyer. Tony Berry was captain, and he had uh, his brother in laws, the Nia brothers, uh, Sparky and, and uh, Sal, and there was uh, a no. few others. Oh, right. Uh, on the boat. So they made the voyage and uh, came back, you know, and the rest is history. But over time, the Western Flyer was here in Monterey, and then it disappeared and went up north in the Pacific Northwest. <clears throat> At some reason, nobody knew where the Western Flyer was. And the way the story goes, somebody that bought the boat changed the name from Western Flyer to the Gemini. And, uh, and a cousin of mine, Bob and Nia, discovered that the Gemini was up north uh, in the state of Washington, Port Tilstead. And uh, so he was trying to gather uh, a group of people to uh, start a foundation and, and uh, also raise monies in order to purchase the boat and have it restored to the original conditions that it was back when we remember the Western Flyer and his family, uh, Bob and Nia's family. So as time went on, uh, a fellow that was a hotel person from San Francisco Bay Area by the name of Gary Keogh. Uh, Gary Keogh owned the uh, Old Dick Bruins uh, department store down in Old Town Salinas. And uh, he was gonna redevelop stuff. And uh, he heard about the, this boat and uh, he bought it for $10,000, Gary Keel did. And unfortunately, Cousin Bob, Adia, uh, didn't make, to make it. He was trying to raise the money, but he couldn't make it. So Gary Keel becomes the owner of this boat called the Gemini. And one day, Gary was having some problems with this boat up there. It kept sinking in the uh, slip it, or where it was moored at. I believe at least two times, and each time they writing it up, talking about a bill of about twenty-five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and this boat was starting to deteriorate up there, you know, and um, so he found out Gary Keogh found out that this boat, the Gemini, was actually the Western Flyer documentation. There must have been something in the cabins or whatever, and so uh, a fellow by the name of John Grigg came about and john greg is has greg uh drilling which uh he drills uh, in the uh deep waters of the ocean and he has uh, property over in uh, harbor of moss landing 
Uh, over on the island, uh, he has uh, he owns the fuel dock. He owns the old uh, Gravel's boat works. Over almost up to the South Jetty. Uh, being an elected official over there, I know all this information. So John buys the boat from Gary Kehoe for one million dollars because of the namesake, historic boat. Right. The boat is, like I said, up in Port Townsend, and they bring the boat up out of the water and put it in a warehouse there in the harbor, and uh, John is going to restore this boat. And they took this boat, took the cab cabin off the boat, laid it off to the side in the warehouse, and they proceeded to take this boat down to make it a skeleton, basically. Took it all the way down to the keel, the bottom part of the boat. This boat is 72 feet long, and they restored this boat from the keel on up. All new ribbings, a brand new stem, which is in the bow of the boat, all new decks, sideboards, freeboards, everything. Uh, new mask on the boat. And then eventually they put the old cabin on the boat, the original cabin, S secured everything. The boat was finally launched back in the water after about, I think, at least two years of restoration. They put a I believe it's a uh, John Deere hybrid diesel engine in there. And uh, so once the boat was in the water and it was floating fine, everything was, all the, the wooden planks were tightened up, they towed this boat down to Seattle, Washington. And that's where they outfitted it with all the electronic gears and such. This boat was originally due to come, come to uh, Monterey uh, Harbor or Moss Landing, uh, uh, March of uh, 2022, I believe it was. They had a scheduled arrival, but I don't know what happened. But uh, on no uh, November the 4th of 2023, this boat was due to arrive in Monterey, California, uh, near the breakwater. And uh, my thought was this. I was talking to people, this was a couple years ago. When the Western Flyer does arrive back home in Monterey, they should have a gala celebration on its entrance. They should take any small crafts they can out of the harbor and have it on both sides like an aisle for the boat to come through. And I understand now that they do have a fireboat here in the harbor. And if they take that fireboat out there, they could spray the water and have a gala sense of, uh, celebration and bring it in. And one of the other things I wanted, I mentioned too, was this, that Tony Berry, the skipper of the boat, had two daughters. I went to school with one of them, Jerry Berry. And if she or her sister still alive, would be an ideal situation would be for the boat coming down the coast to stop off maybe in Santa Cruz and pick up the girls or whomever and bring them across the bay and they could be part of the celebration coming into Monterey Harbor. I know I get kind of emotional when I 